Welcome to the show. I hope that you had a very Merry Christmas and got to enjoy it with friends, family, loved ones, all those around you. Excited about this week's show. Later on, I'm going to have my guest, Dr. Gregory Merrick, who's going to be talking to us about the Cancer Research Classic, the premier high school basketball tournament in the country. But first, I want to talk with us about some of our usual features. I'm going to start off with our community champion this week, and it's a little bit of a somber note. Community champion this week is Mark Nardoni. Teacher, administrator, coach at Wheeling Park High School, who died this week after a bout and battle with ALS. And I've known Coach Nardoni for a long time. First met him when I was in high school. One of my coaches, I didn't play on the defensive side of the ball where he coached. He was a defensive coordinator at the time, uh, but got to know him nonetheless. And as the years went on, I got to know him in other aspects. And in 2001, I was honored to have him, when he was the head coach at Willing Park High School, ask me to be the guest speaker at the Willing Park High School football banquet at the end of the season. And not only did he ask me to speak and that I have that opportunity, but he also presented me with a very nice gift at the end of the uh, banquet to, as, as a token of appreciation for me being there, which I still have in my trophy case at home now. Uh, and then later on, uh, he offered for me to come coach there. I turned him down on two different occasions, but uh, nonetheless, uh, he was always kind to me, offered to come coach. Once, once upon a time, I needed a pair of shoulder pads for a, a kid. Uh, he said, no problem, come on up here and grab a pair. And he let me borrow them for the season. Just always uh, willing to do whatever it, it needed to be done for somebody that he knew and that I, I had grown up around him. But more importantly, over the, pa the past couple of years, the way in which he's been so positive as he battled ALS, turning to God, relying upon his faith, and so many people in this community rallied around the example that he set to keep his faith and to keep the battle going, that Team Nardoni was formed, and so many people in the Wheeling Park community and the greater Wheeling community at large rallied around him. And although he may have lost the battle against ALS, overall he won the fight and showed so many people how you can keep your faith in the time of greatest struggle. So for that, he's the community champion here this week on the show. He'll be sadly missed by so many in this area. May he rest in peace. Next, the quote of the week, and I think this ties right into it, and that's from Rachel Platten's fight song. And I don't really care if nobody else believes, because I've still got a lot of fight left in me. And I chose that this week because I think it ties into the fight that Coach Nardoni put forth, but also the fight that so many people need to have in their lives every single day. And there will be times where people don't believe in you. There'll be times where no one believes in you. But if you have a lot of fight in you, then you can do anything. If you keep your faith in God, if you keep that battle going, then no matter who believes in you, if you believe in yourself and you have fight in you, then you can do just about anything. So keep that in mind. So I chose the words from Rachel Platten's fight song this week. And I don't really care if nobody else believes because I still got a lot of fight left in me. One of my son, Matt, who's three years old, uh, one of his favorite songs, perhaps his favorite song. So also the tip of the cap there to my son, Matt, on that one. Legal tip this week. Hire a lawyer who is experienced in the area of law that you need when you're hiring a lawyer. And the reason I say that is so many people think, well, a lawyer is a lawyer. And Believe it or not, under the ethical rules for lawyers, we're not allowed to say that we specialize in a certain area of law. You can't say, I specialize in personal injury, or I specialize in wills or divorces. You can say your practice is limited to, or you concentrate your practice in a certain area, but you can't say you specialize in, unlike many other areas or professions. But there are ways you can find out what someone does the most. Ask them questions about when's the last time you handled this type of matter? How many of them have you done? And, and that's important because just like you wouldn't want a foot doctor operating on your heart, you don't want a lawyer who's not experienced in a certain area of the law handling your legal matter that may be very important to you and likely is very important to you. Most people that come to my office to see me or one of the other lawyers at our office have never been to a lawyer before. Um, if they have, it's been maybe to get a simple will done, maybe because they were buying a house and needed a deed or a title search, uh, sometimes for a divorce. Uh, but those are really the areas that most people have had some type of dealing with a lawyer. So they come, they're nervous, they don't know what to expect. One of the ways that you can kind of allay those fears or those concerns you may have is to ask questions, and particularly about the experience of the lawyer. And if they're not really willing to share their experience with you, not tell you about the things they've done, it's a pretty good bet that they probably haven't done those things before, or if they have, they haven't had much success in doing it because they don't want to tell you about it. 
uh, once upon a time, uh, the general counsel for a major corporation told my dad and I in a mediation, it's a very sorry dog who can't wag his own tail. And th there's a lot of truth to that. If, if you believe in what you're doing, you know you do a good job of it, you're proud of the work you do, you're not embarrassed to tell people about that work and your experience and the types of accomplishments you've been able to achieve for people. So ask those questions, make sure you get a lawyer who is experienced in the area of law for which you need one. Otherwise, you may end up with a bad result or bad outcome with respect to whatever your legal matter may be. We're going to need to take a break. When we come back, I'll have Dr. Gregory Merrick from Wheeling Hospital, renowned radiation oncologist with me to talk about his work and also the Cancer Research Classic Basketball Tournament. Stay with us here on the Jamie Borda Show. We've been advertising with WTRF for over two years. We've been advertising with WTRF for about four years now. Uh, we've been advertising with Channel 7 for 28 years now. Commercials are a natural part of the television viewing experience. Local businesses need your support to be able to stay and grow in our communities. We saw a 40% increase in our sales first year. They come to our store, they shoot our commercials, they're always what we ask for. We never have any problems or complaints. It's a good way to get your name out there. Um, people can see you, get to know you, and then when they need your service or your products, they'll, they'll call you. Well, the value is in the numbers. We have had uh, very, very good uh, luck with Channel 7. They've, uh, they've increased our sales, so that's where it counts. We have had such a great experience advertising. Our commercial shoots are wonderful. We have such a good time, and uh, it's, a, it's the best way to advertise these days. Welcome back to the show. One of my favorite times each week when I have a guest here with me on the show, and this week is renowned radiation oncologist from Wheeling Hospital, Dr. Gregory Merrick. Doctor, thanks for being here on the show. Thanks for having me, Jamie. I appreciate it. You started this basketball classic called the Cancer Research Classic 10 years ago now. Hard to believe it's been a decade, but now the premier high school basketball tournament in the country. You know, when, you, when I even travel the country, people have heard of this that are in different high schools and uh, you've got to be pretty special to, to make it to this tournament. Ten years now, congratulations. Well, thank you. We're really proud, and we think this is going to be our best year to date. Uh, Preseason, we have ten of the top 20 teams in the country coming through here. Once again, we have ESPN doing all of the games. Uh, in our regional division, we've always included Park and Central, and they bring a, a huge part to uh, this event. It's one of the things we're very proud of that we've been able to give our local kids an opportunity to play on a bigger stage and to get some of the exposure that they deserve. Uh, it's an opportunity for us to uh, further um, the uh, interest in uh, knowledge of men's health. Uh, so overall, we've been extremely, extremely pleased. And, you know, the number of players that have come through here, if you just think over the last 10 years, guys like Tariq Evans, uh, Jabari Parker, Jaleel Okafor, Andrew Wiggins, Jalen Brunson, um, Jason Tatum, Ben Simmons, D'Angelo Russell, you can go on and on and on of how many people have come through here in the last three NBA drafts of the top three picks each year, six of the nine had played here before they got to college. That's something else. I mean, these guys are now getting paid to play and paid yeah. big dollars, but let's, let's rewind. I mean, 10 years ago, you know, what made you think that, hey, you know, I can pull this off in Wheeling, West Virginia and get all these teams to come in and, and what was the, the inspiration for it and how how did you think you could do it? Well, number one, we wanted to use the celebrity of basketball to increase men's health awareness. Number two, there was a lot of guys I knew in basketball and I was able to talk to them and tell them that they should come and support us. So our goal on day one was to be the best basketball tournament that we could be and to be an event where every kid who played here will remember this as the best event they were. And we've had an enormous amount of support from the community to be able to do that. In particular, Ogilvy Park has done a great job of supporting us. All of our kids are lodged there, they're fed there, Wheeling Jesuit, Wheeling Hospital, members throughout our community that are too many for me to even begin to mention have all been very instrumental in us being successful. You know, Talking about you, know, you and basketball and knowing the people in basketball, um, maybe tell our viewers, how do you get to know these people? I mean, you, how have you been surrounding yourself with all these basketball people over the years? Well, it's a game I love, and I've been around basketball since I've been young, and I had the, the, the fortunate uh, uh, to uh, be at Temple, and uh, Coach John Chaney is basically my second father, and um, being able to work with him and learn from him over the years is 
uh, been a real pleasure and it helped us open a lot of doors. I mean, I can't tell you how many great people I've met because of basketball, just like you. How many great people have you met because of your football connections? Uh, it, it's, it's been very special. You know, in, in talking about some of the events that are gonna happen, you know, for, for people who don't know, it's, we're just a week away now. You know, January 6th and 7th are the games at Wheeling Jesuit University. And as you said, they're on TV also, but for people, here in the local area to get an opportunity to come watch this high level of basketball. Who are some of the teams they'll be seeing this year if they well, want to go out and check it out? Well, we have a lot of Lumileers, the number one ranked team in the country with a strong wheeling connection. Their coach Shane uh, Herman played for Doug Wojcik at uh, Tulsa and Doug's son Paxton is a sophomore on that team and uh, gets some playing time and Paxton's already had two or three division one offers. They're going to be playing Finley out of Vegas and Finley will probably be the number three ranked team when they come here. Uh, with a, a Kentucky recruit, P.J. Washington. Uh, IMG is a top five team in the country with two, maybe three future uh, NBA players on there. We have three teams from Atlanta. Atlanta had five of the top 15 teams in the country preseason. Atlanta basketball this year is crazy. Wow. Uh, and we have three teams from there, DeMatha and Gonzaga out of the D.C. Catholic League. And uh, DeMatha's star is heading over to Notre Dame this year, D.J. Harvey. And uh, their coach, Mike Jones, is very... Uh, intimately involved with UA, USA basketball and you know that is kind of where I think we all can learn something from the event if you're a fan it's a great place to be the best basketball if you're a coach you come watch what are the best high school basketball coaches in the country do and if you're a player come and watch the guy that plays your position uh, you know you steal from high performing uh, artists so it's an opportunity for us to all learn but we're very very happy with the uh, teams that we have coming through you mentioned coaches. I mean, over the years, there have been a number of high-profile college coaches coming out to watch these best players and check in on their recruits. And you know, uh, whether it be coaches from Kentucky, North Carolina, you know, Roy Williams has been in, John Calipari has been, you know, different people have been in to watch these games. Yeah, it, it is. You never know who's going to show. It depends on their schedules a lot. And sometimes, you know, they won't be able to come, but an assistant will come because they have a game. Uh, so we expect that there'll be a reasonable number of college coaches here this year. Yeah, well, you know, and you mentioned, you know, Wheeling Park, Wheeling Central, both with the opportunity to play in this event, and what a great uh, opportunity it is and the exposure that these kids get. And, you know, I watched Wheeling Central play this week and uh, looking very impressive, very athletic. And you, you never know, you know, a, a coach is there to watch someone else and maybe tells one of his uh, friends in the coaching fraternity, hey, you ought to check out this kid from Wheeling Central, Wheeling Park, I think he could play at your level, that type of thing, so it really helps these kids as well. Well, it, it does, and you know, Central's the cream of the crop in the area this year. They have a very nice team. They're small but athletic. They play well together, and you know, it happened. Chase Harler's first national blurb came from the CRC. Uh, Phil Bledsoe, uh, Reggie Rankin of ESPN, fell in love with his game and did a lot of things to help open doors. CRC didn't get those guys to Division One. They'd have got there without it. But I think that the CRC helped a little bit along the way. And you're right. Uh, I think that some of our local kids will be seen this year that normally wouldn't be seen. Uh, and I'm excited for them. And uh, I hope that uh, they get a little extra interest from the next level by playing in this event. We need to take a break. When we come back. We'll continue talking with Dr. Gregory Merrick about the Cancer Research Classic and also his work at Wheeling Hospital. Stay with us here on the Jamie Borda Show. Hey, look, it's those guys. Are you good to drive? I'm fine. How many did you have? I should be fine. You should be? Go and step out of the vehicle for me. See ya, buddy. Good luck. So it turns out, buzz driving and drunk driving, they're the same thing, and it costs around $10,000. This so message is brought to you by Wine and Beverage Merchants of West Virginia. My favorite Christmas memory is after my family would come home from midnight mass. I'm a triplet and I have an older brother, and the four of us would pile on the couch. My mom and dad would read us, Twas the Night Before Christmas. Now we had a little box with about $10 or so in it, and every time the word the came up, we'd pass it either left or right. Now whoever ends with the box, wins the ten dollars. Although I've only won it one time, I still just love being around my family during the Christmas time, during the holidays. It's such a cheery time, so that's my favorite memory. Welcome back to the show. Hope everyone's gearing up for the new year and anytime around here in the Wheeling area when you're talking new year, you think of the Cancer Research Classic one of the premier basketball tournaments in the country. And 
its founder and, and uh, Dr. Gregory Merrick is here with me today talking about that. And, you know, one of the things that we haven't talked about is the non-basketball stuff. I mean, there are, there are other events, teams, uh, and schools that are involved with this from the local area in the marching bands. Uh, the, the bands have just been remarkable. They bring so much intensity and life uh, to the event, and we're very grateful to all of the band leaders and the kids uh, who are there, and uh, they've just changed the complexion of the whole event. Yeah, I noticed this year you've got uh, Barnesville, Bel Air, Shadyside, St. Clairsville, Steubenville, and William Park uh, bands all involved in this. Yeah. And you've got some of the most spirited schools, certainly, and, and I think the bands always bring a lot of spirit to those schools. And I, I always enjoy, you know, when coaching football, when a, when a school's got a great band, you come out into the field and you hear it, even though it's the other team's band, you still get <laughs> excited and it brings something to the environment. The very first year we had it, it was Simeon with Jabari Parker playing Miller Grove out of Atlanta. And at halftime, ESPN bigwigs called in and they said, this is remarkable. Great athletes, the place is jammed, the bands are loud. It gives it a Big Ten feel. Really made you feel good. But I, I, I hope the kids have as much fun as, as we do having them there. But they just do a fabulous job. So where do people get tickets? If they want to, if they want, they have to get them at the gate or can they get them in advance? You no, know, we can get them in advance. Uh, if you're going to be there uh, for the most of the event, I think reserve seats are great. It's $50 for all 11 games. General admission is $18 for all 11 games and a student general admission is 10 bucks. So we try to keep everything very uh, reasonable. Uh, there are numbers that they can find either on our website uh, to call either 304-243 three, four, nine, zero can get them switched through, but we'll be selling uh, all of those packages uh, uh, beforehand. We have group packages for teams of any kind, boys, girls, baseball, basketball, soccer, whatever. Uh, 20 kids, uh, including their coaches for $90 for the entire weekend. Well, that's great. That's a new logo even this year, I see on the shirt there uh, for the Cancer Research yeah, Classic. Yeah, we've got a new logo, uh, Mike Parsons and Tony Caridi. Uh, we're working very closely with them on CRC Basketball TV and Mike, wanted a new logo and I love it. He did a great job and I, I loved our old one, but he said it had to go. <laughs> well, sometimes, sometimes those folks, they want to, they want to start uh, telling you to change everything. You have to hold on to some things that are close <laughs> to you, but sometimes you got to listen to those guys too. You You're know? exactly right. You know, so all this is to raise awareness for men's health, which is, yeah. you know, your profession when it comes down to it. And uh, you've been able to do some great things uh, here in the local area. People, you know, from, um, the region and, and beyond around the country come now to Wheeling uh, for treatment of things like prostate cancer and, and other uh, things that you treat. Yes, well, we're very proud. I, my practice is, of course, only in neurologic oncology, and we're very fortunate because of the great team we've had. We've had patients from 42 states and 17 foreign countries. But the focus of this event is to in increase men's health awareness. We as men live seven, eight, nine years less than women just because we're not smart enough to go to doctors. Women are much brighter than we are. And in the concourse of the McDonough Center, there'll be a lot of health care booths manned by some of our residents under the direction of Jim Commercy, Angelo Georges, a lot of health care providers to provide information on men's health. Uh, and I think we're starting to turn the corner. We're seeing guys starting to go to physicians earlier, but but you and I are too hard-headed as a, as a gender compared to women to get there soon enough often. What is the biggest tip you could give to men out there that are, uh, you know, in terms of awareness? I think the biggest thing that anybody can tell you is that you need to exercise on a daily basis. You need to walk at least 30 minutes a day. You need to eat a high-fiber, low-fat diet, heart-healthy diet, no tobacco, alcohol in moderation, ideal body weight, have a good primary care physician that you see early to monitor your blood pressure, your cholesterol, for diabetes, and that's about it. And, and screenings, colonoscopy and PSA if you're a man, and if you're a woman, of course, no PSA, but mammograms and pap smears. So the opportunity to follow what we call our top 10 list is really common sense things. Uh, so just live healthy. With respect to monitoring PSA, something that kind of ties right into what you do, at what age should people start doing that and then how do they go about monitoring PSA? Maybe some people might not even know what PSA is. Yeah, well, PSA is a simple blood test that is a predictor for underlying prostate cancer. There's been a lot of controversy over the past few years, and I think the controversies will actually make PSA even a better uh, agent. But the death rate from prostate cancer has fallen more over the past 25 years than any other cancer in America. 
but we've treated too much prostate cancer, and we now know that. And one of the things I'm very actively involved in is active surveillance, is not treating all prostate cancers, but closely monitoring. A man, in my opinion, should have his first PSA at age 40. Uh, and if it's below one, probably not another one for five years. The American Cancer Society, the AUA, will say age 50 uh, for the first one, except if you have a family history or if you're black, and then you should start at 40. But that PSA at 40 is a strong predictor as to who will develop prostate cancer at 50, 60, 70, 80. So that's why I think it's so important to get that early. Well. I'm 41, so that's good advice for me, <laughs> so I guess I should be, be getting on that. But uh, I really appreciate uh, all that you're doing to raise awareness for men's health, the, the treatment you provide to people here in the, in the local area, and also for this great cancer research class that you brought here to the Valley and uh, allowed uh, so many people to enjoy. I appreciate all your support, and thank you so much for having me. Well, thanks for being here. Okay, thanks, Jamie. We need to take a break. When we come back, I'll be talking sports. Stay with us here on the Jamie Borders Show. This message is brought to you by Wine and Beverage Merchants of West Virginia. Growing up in Akron, Ohio, there aren't a lot of Christmases that I don't remember. Lots and lots of snow. We love to just hop in the car and go look at dozens of holiday lights. I loved helping my grandmothers in the kitchen, and I'm proud to carry on two of their recipes now, Pipzels and Empire Biscuits. It wasn't the holidays for me if I hadn't watched The Grinch, my favorite, or It's a Wonderful Life, my dad's favorite. I was always in choir, so the holidays always meant lots of singing concerts, but my favorite part of the whole season was spending time with my family. Welcome back to the show. It's time to talk sports. Let's start off with the sports person of the week, Antonio Brown. My goodness, Antonio Brown. What a play to win the game and win the AFC North for the Steelers. You know, AB gets tackled at the half yard line. That game is over. I mean, there's no going to overtime. There's no kicking. There's no anything. There's no one more play. The clock is going to run out. So for him to make the play to duck down and then reach up and stretch the ball across to win the game was pretty spectacular. You know, Coach Tomlin was asked this week, was he supposed to run that route into the end zone? And Coach Tomlin's re response was pretty interesting. He said he was supposed to score, and he did. Uh, and he did score, but a uh, risk of where, he, where the route was run, but uh, he got the ball into the end zone, and uh, the Steelers found a way to come back and win that game uh, when it looked like things were in real jeopardy. And if they hadn't won, as I said on this show last week, the road would have gotten really tough. They had to beat Cleveland, would have had to beat in Cleveland this week and hope for a Ravens loss against Cincinnati. So a lot of things would have to happen there, but Steelers were able to win the AFC North, love the shirts, defend the North that the uh, coaches and players were wearing. And so now the Steelers will get a wild card game at home after they've finished the season off against Cleveland. And the big question this week is, do you play your starters? You know, a lot of talk about if you rest them, they might be rusty for that first round playoff game. If you play them, then guys could get hurt. It looks like Coach Tomlin's leaning toward resting some of the key players like Ben Roethlisberger, Antonio Brown, Le'Veon Bell. He's talked about resting Marquise Pouncey, some of the guys that have had some difficulties with injuries. This will buy Ladarius Green another week in the concussion protocol from the hit he took against uh, the Bengals a couple weeks ago. But the, the question is, will they be rusty now heading into the playoffs? You know, the Browns game doesn't really matter this week, but you do want to go into the playoffs on a high note. You do want your guys to be clicking on all cylinders, and the Steelers have this huge winning streak going. So what do you do? I think he's right to consider resting the players. I think you do rest the players. You don't take a chance on injury. And these guys are professionals. Taking one week off shouldn't make you rusty. In fact, maybe it rests the legs a little bit, gets you a little bit more energy for that first-round playoff game. So I say rest them, uh, even though personally I'll be disappointed because I'm going after the game, and I know – uh, you know, I'd like to see the, the, be the best players playing. I know my kids would like to see the best players playing, but uh, probably the right thing to do to rest the players, get them ready for the playoffs. Uh, the road in the AFC will go through New England in all likelihood. If, the, if New England wins or the Raiders lose this week, then New England has home field throughout the playoffs. If, the, if New England would lose and the Raiders would win, that would flip. But 
Likely to be playoffs go through New England. Steelers will probably get one home playoff game against the Dolphins and then probably be on the road to Oakland and then New England in all likelihood. So before the year started, I picked the Steelers and the Seahawks in the Super Bowl. I'm going to stick with it. You know, I make those predictions. I like to stick with them while they're still viable, and they are right now. So I'm going to stick with the Steelers and the Seahawks, although in the NFC, Dallas home field advantage, you know, unexpected, you know, but the rookies, Dak Prescott, Zeke Elliott behind that stout offensive line have had a spectacular season. Dallas says, mm, probably not going to rest their starters. Uh, I don't know about that decision, but looks like that's what they're going to do. But I'll stick with the Seahawks coming out of the NFC. Speaking of professional sports, the NBA on Christmas Day has kind of become something that people are now expect. I mean, you know, this year, great game, one point win by the Cleveland Cavaliers over top of the Golden State Warriors. The Warriors blew a 14 point lead late and, you know, questionable officiating maybe at the end. Looked like Kevin Durant maybe got fouled and they're pushed, but you're not going to get that call with the, with the game on the line. Uh, but the Warriors, you know, too many turnovers is the big thing. And they're still trying to kind of maybe figure out how to play with this roster. A lot of turnover and, you know, Durant added to the roster, but lost some of the other guys like Barnes, like Spades, like Bogut. So NBA season could be fun to watch. I know a lot of people think, oh, I don't like to watch the NBA, but I think it's a lot more fun than maybe it was five, six years ago, especially with this Cavs-Warriors rivalry that's, that's been developing over the last few years. College football playoff coming up. Alabama versus Washington. Ohio State versus Clemson. Can anyone beat Alabama? I don't think Washington can. I think Alabama wins that game. I think Washington has a 5% chance or something like that, but I just don't think that they're as tested. They haven't been there through the years. You know, I do like their coach, Chris Peterson. I think that he's had success you know, at, at a high level. He's the second winningest active coach in college football behind Urban, Urban Meyer, uh, and, and I, but I think Alabama is going to be too good. I'll take Ohio State over Clemson. I think Ohio State's going to win that game. In fact, my, Ohio State is my pick to win the playoff overall. I don't think Alabama gets through this. I don't think they win another title this year. I think Ohio State will win. Even though I picked Michigan to get to the playoff before the year started, I just like this Ohio State team, and I really like Urban Meyer. And Alabama with that freshman quarterback, tough for freshman quarterbacks to win a title. When things you know, get to the big game, when things get tight, you know, Will they be able to come through? You just never know. And their offensive coordinator, Lane Kiffin, now has taken a head coaching job. He'll coach Alabama through the rest of the season, but will his mind be somewhere else? Will he be focusing on his new job? So that's another factor there as well uh, to, to, to keep an eye on. But I'll take Alabama and Ohio State in the semifinals, and I'll take Ohio State over Alabama in the title game. I hope that you all have a very, very happy New Year's. Be safe. Don't drink and drive. We'll see you again next week on the Jamie Borda Show.